Hi, and welcome back to a new section. In this section, we'll talk about randomness and statistics. Now we can implement this using NumPy. So before we start, let's just look at what we will cover. So this section is really all about generating random numbers and calculating statistics in NumPy. More specifically, we'll learn how to generate random integers using NumPy. We will learn how to shuffle an array and also how to choose numbers randomly from an array. I know that Stina has told you about plotting, so I want to use this and will create and plot normally distributed vectors. If you don't know what normally distributed means, that's completely fine, I'll explain it in the video. So I also said we should calculate some statistics, and specifically this means calculate means, which we have seen previously, and also variances and medians. These are important summary statistics of data that you really want to get your hands on. Finally, I'll show you how to find all the unique values in an array and how we can use that to plot a histogram of the frequency of values. As usual, we have an exercise set, and the exercise set this time geared towards data analysis. So in this exercise, we'll work with what's called linear regression. This is a very simple and standard machine learning algorithm. We'll implement that using NumPy. Of course, the focus will be on randomness and statistics in NumPy, also for the exercise set, but we'll use this in a context where we can have some fun with linear regression. So again, you don't need to know anything about this from before, we'll explain it all in the exercise set. So I hope you're ready for this, and I'll see you in the next video. Hi, so I'm back in Jupyter Notebooks, and here I have a new sheet called Randomness and Statistics. And for the first three videos, I'm going to talk about random numbers in NumPy. So the first video is about making generators and random integers. So let us start, first of all, by importing the correct thing. So in this case, I want to go into the NumPy package and specifically import a module called random. And inside this module, to be able to generate random numbers, we'll need to make a kind of generator object. So I'll make a variable called RNG, which stands for random number generator. This will be equal to random. Now we'll use the function default RNG. And this here runs fine. And what this does, the default RNG function, is to kind of initiate a generator object. So let me just type this, that this initiates a generator object. And we'll use this generator object to create random numbers of different sorts. So first of all, let's just check the type of RNG. We can see now that this is inside the random module and is what's called a generator. If you want to be really precise, then the generator object is actually a container for a kind of lower level object called a bit generator. But we don't need to concern ourselves with this. So what we just need is to work with a random generator. Now we have this RNG, the random number generator, and we can call methods on it. So if I just press period here and then press tab, then I will get up a list here of possible methods that I can use and attributes. And what I will first do is to do the integer one integers. If I press here shift tab, I can also get up a doc string. And here you can see I have some information. This takes in a low value, a high value, and a size and some other things. So this essentially creates a lot of random numbers between a low value and a high value. So if I want random numbers between 0 and 10, then this is the thing. If I now run it, then I'll just get one number. And that's fine. That's not too bad. But we typically want full arrays of random numbers. So I can specify a size attribute here. Let's say I want 10 of them. Then I get back an array and you can see here that these are random numbers between 0 and 10. You might notice that if I run this several times, I get different numbers. So that's good because it should be random. But also that 10 is never included. So if you look again at the doc string, it says that the high value is exclusive. If you really want it to be inclusive, you can either say, yeah, let's go to 11. This is one option. Or you can pass in endpoint, I think. Let's just try this. And I want the endpoint to be true. This means that the endpoint, meaning the high here, should be included. Now you can see that 10 also appears. So RNG, the random number generator, is this kind of new scary object. But once you call a method on it, like integers, this thing here, just again to make sure, this is really just our classical NumPy arrays. We know what to do with these. We can sum them, we can take their product, we can use all the functions that we have developed so far. So let me just have it like this. And as a simple example, we can make random bits. So recall that the bits can be at least modeled as being either zero or one. And we can make a lot of random bits by just doing RNG, calling integers. And now I want only from zero to two and two not inclusive. So if you just pass in one number, namely two, then by default, this will be the high number. And let's say I want 
64 of these. And you can see that I get 64 bits and they're random. One thing to note is that, say this is perfect, this is precisely the numbers I want, and then I just run the cell again and I get new ones, so how do I get the old ones back? As it stands now, I can't do this in an easy way, this is because I didn't provide a seed. So initially here, if I do the default random number generator, if I look at the doc string, you can see that I can pass in a seed. So a seed essentially means a reference point where I can always go back to this. You might have noticed that if you're following along, you will get different random numbers than I do, but let's say we pass in a seed, let's say 42. The specific number is a, just a reference, so you can pick any number you want. Let's say that we choose 42. In this case, if I run this cell now, I've initiated the RNG with 42 as seed, Let's say I now run this one, and the first thing that happens is 087. I can run it again, and I can get new stuff. But if I want to get back to the original starting point, meaning 087, I just run this again with seed 42. Run it, now I get 087 again. This is also nice because if you're tagging along, you'll get exactly the same numbers as me, as long as you pass in the same seed. If you choose a different seed, say 101, you'll have a different stream here going on. So this is the way to create random integers. Just to be clear, randomness means that each number here, from 0 to 10, have equal chance of appearing in each of these entries. So you see here that you will get repeated entries like 8 appearing 3 times. You'll also have entries like 2, I guess, that's not appearing at all. So randomness in general is used in a lot of fields, for instance, either in game design or let's say for doing machine learning with splitting a test and training set for those who know about that. It should also be pointed out here that this is what's really called a pseudo random number generator. This means that the numbers here are constructed based on an algorithm, so they have good properties relating to randomness, but they're not secure in any way. This means that you shouldn't use this for cryptography related things, but you could safely use them in machine learning and related fields. Thanks, and I'll see you again in the next video. Hi, welcome back. So in this video I want to talk about three functions that we have, namely the random function, the shuffle function, and the choice function. We'll also get a chance to visualize some of this randomness by using matplotlib. So let's start by the random function. The random function is kind of like this integer function, except that it produces random floats. So random floating point numbers. It's typically between 0 and 1. So let's make a variable. Let's call it uniform floats. Let's set this to RNG, so our random number generator, and use the method random. Inside the random method, so again I press shift tab, here I can see what I need to pass in, so it should pass in at least the size. So let's do 50 of them. This works fine, so let's print this out. Here you can see that I have a bunch of numbers between 0 and 1, and they're all uniformly distributed. This means that each number has an equally probable chance of appearing here. So what we can do to get a kind of insight into how this looks is to use matplotlib, as Dina taught you in the previous sections. So let's talk about drawing randomness. So let's first of all import matplotlib. So I'll use a typical convention PLT for matplotlib. So let's make an x variable and an y variable, both of them just being random numbers. Let x be, again, go into RNG and do random. Let's pick, say, 300 of these, and let's do the same for y. Notice that since I'm using this function twice, x and y will not have the same numbers. Both have numbers drawn from this uniform random distribution. I know that Dina taught you about this, so in matplotlib we have the scatter function, so I can write plt.scatter, and then plot x against y, and I'll have plt.show here. And here you can see our numbers. So you can see that on both the x-axis, here and the y-axis, we have it ranging from 0 all the way to 1. So this is what randomness looks like when we have uniformly distributed. If the points lie on a nice grid, equally distant from each other, then that's a very structured thing. Randomness actually means that in some areas you will have nothing, and in some areas you'll have clutters of more of them. So to make this, you can imagine placing a blindfold on someone and asking them to throw a dart at a board. Then you record a point and ask them to do it again 300 times. Then you'll get, hopefully, something looking like this. Some of the arrows will actually be close, but in some places you simply won't hit anything. So this is the random function, and we also have two more functions here. They're kind of short and cute. So we have the shuffle function, and we have the choice function. Let me actually just import NumPy, the whole library, as MP, so that I can make my array 
This is numpy.array. And again, let's do the usual one that I do, which is 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42. Now we can take our random number generator and use the method shuffle on our array. Let's print this out. Shuffled array. Hope this is a verb. And let's print just out the array. And now you can see that I've shuffled it, meaning that I've taken these things here and just reshuffled them in an arbitrary order. So the word shuffled come from playing cards where you just shuffle the deck before you play it out. So now everything is in a kind of a random order. So if you wanted to model like playing cards, then this could be useful. This is actually also useful in machine learning. If you have a model and you have a lot of data, then you want to shuffle your data before sending it into your model so that the data does not depend on the way you collected it. So in addition to the shuffle function, we have the choice function. And the choice function essentially chooses a number of elements from a given array. Let me make a variable called three elements from array, a very long name. I think this tells you what it's going to do. So I'm going to go into my random number generator and do the choice function. I'm going to act on my array and I'm also going to specify a size here. And I want the size to be three. Running this looks good. So let's print out three elements. Just autocomplete this. Here you can see that three elements have been chosen, 23, 16, and then 23 again. So this choice here is what's called with replacement. This means that I've taken 23, then I try to take another 16, then I try to take another, but each time I have all of them as possibilities to choose from. This is called with replacement. So you can see here, if you go to the choice function and just take shift tab, then you can see the optional arguments and it default is replace true, meaning with replacement. If I specifically don't want replacement, then I would say replace equals false. And in this case, however many times I run it, I will never take the same thing twice. In the next video, I'm going to show you that you have a lot of statistical distributions built into NumPy. And this is really one of the things that separates it from the default random module in Python. So thanks, and I'll see you again in the next video.